in many cases, you don't necessarily know what you don't know until you have a chance to look. The Earth's climate and the carbon cycle are tightly interwoven with one another. As temperature and precipitation patterns change, the carbon cycle changes in response. But then those changes in carbon sinks and sources feed directly back into the atmosphere, releasing more carbon dioxide, leading to further climate change, and so and so forth. So these feedbacks are critical for us understanding the future of our planet and how the climate's gonna change, you know, 50 to 100 years from now. GeoCarb really is a unique mission and it's a spectrometer flying in geostationary orbit and it measures by using reflected light off the, the surface of the Earth, it measures our carbon dioxide concentrations, methane and CO. Carbon monoxide is emitted uh, either from anthropogenic source, so human cause, like from car or power plant, but it's also emitted from fires. By measuring carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide simultaneously, we'll be able to tell, you know, did the CO2 that we're looking at right now, did it come from, you know, the, the traffic in the city that's 100 miles away, or did it come from something closer like the forest? That carbon monoxide really is a tracer of anthropogenic activity. GeoCarb is, is truly a, an international team. We have industrial partners. Uh, Lockheed, of course, is the prime, but uh, other companies uh, have been very, very in involved with everything that we've done. And then, of course, we've got many NASA centers. We've got the Goddard Space Flight Center, the Langley Space Flight Center, the Ames Research uh, Center. We've got Colorado State as a partner. And, of course, we've got NASA headquarters is deeply engaged on this important mission. NASA chose GeoCarb over other Earth science observing missions in this case because of its geostationary orbit. Current greenhouse gas measuring missions fly in low Earth orbit. So what they are able to see is only a thin sliver or a thin track of information as they orbit the Earth. Geocarb, in contrast, will position itself in geostationary orbit far above the Earth such that its field of view can see the entire North American and South American land masses. Geocarb uh, is going to allow us to improve our knowledge because it's going to make measurements at, at spatial and temporal scales that are very fine and that are consistent with these large-scale weather patterns. And we know that large-scale weather patterns influence the concentration of methane and CO2 in the atmosphere, and it does so by changing emissions. We have a whole team of people at the Lockheed Martin Advanced Technology Center that's responsible for building our infrared spectrometer. Um, it's a very, very advanced, complex uh, optical instrument that has mechanical engineers, systems engineers, electrical engineers, software engineers. The Lockheed Martin team is really excited to be, to be able to be providing this first of its kinds uh, instrument uh, to the scientific community. The biggest challenges for GeoCarb are that we're trying to take this kind of game-changing technology and, and make sure that it fits in a small enough form factor that it can fly on a commercial satellite. Um, but we have been able to, to make those design choices and with our partners have been able to successfully come to a design that's uh, going to be able to measure these gases. It, it's important to uh, understand the tropic uh, carbon cycle in the context of the uh, global climate change because almost 40% of the um, carbon dioxide, the CO2, uh, emitted in the atmosphere come from fires. And most of the fires are in the tropics. You know. The GeoCarb will help us understanding the carbon cycle and with the use of chemistry transport model, we will be able to um, separate the information of deforestation with information of degradation over the forest, for instance. With what we're seeing in the climate over the past several years with more severe weather events of you know, more powerful hurricanes, more wildfires, droughts, something like GeoCarb is coming at just the right time for us to be able to get a sharper eye on things, on how the carbon balance is changing in the atmosphere of the Earth. One of my hopes is that we could use this data because we could produce weekly, if you will, uh, charts of, of the concentration of methane and CO2 over the Americas. This could be part of nightly news that, that 
here we would see this week, and we would see then these these influence of some of these weather patterns, the influence of industrial activity, the influence of uh, fossil fuel production. And this would really kind of connect uh, the user to what the emissions really are. And that I think is very important for an informed citizenry.